Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. My name is Gabby and today we're going to talk about clocks. Yes, this is Ian Canada's SC Pure Clock. I finally got it in my hand here. So I'm all excited to give it a try and give it a listen and see if this is going to live up to ex expectations. I think we're all wondering about the same thing. So here it is. It comes in a nice, uh, nice little box. familiar with what clocks are they are used in mostly in DAX and other digital processes where they actually keep timing accurately so if you're for example converting digital music to analog music it's the DAX that's going to actually decide when those bits are played because yes bits are bits but the timing between bits is critical and if you have an accurate clock the sound will be a lot better also to compare clocks, we usually refer to their phase noise. All clocks uh, have phase noise and that noise uh, causes the music not to sound so great. And the lower the phase noise, the better. Uh, the SC Pure clocks have one of the lowest phase noise out there. And traditionally, the clocks that has the lowest phase noise tends to sound a lot better. So I got the 45 and 48 uh, family version. So I figure that's the most common uh, one to, to use. I think the big burning question of all of us is how do these things sound? So to do that, I had to devise a rig that I can actually compare different clocks. So it's not easy to uh, differentiate between clocks uh, sound. It's all about imaging and certain subtle changes, the instrument placements and all that kind of very minor detail stuff that you kind of want to watch for. So the testing rig is uh, mainly the core of it is this little uh, circuit board that I've actually put together. Uh, so it's got four clocks on the same board. And uh, so we've got the SC Pure here, even the Crucilicon. These are in uh, standard clocks that come with the uh, FIFO Pi that you usually order. And here we have a Christec uh, CCHD997. Uh, so these are all four common clocks that you probably want to consider. Here you can see the effects on the uh, little rig here. It's uh, powered by the bottom part, the white part is actually made by Sonoff. You can buy that off Amazon. It's basically a bunch of relays that you can control by app. You can see here how it switches between different channels. So uh, this is a part that I actually built together and it's actually made of different, uh, you can see there's uh, four clocks here on it and uh, you can see that uh, it's got some little capacitors to help uh, reduce the noise. Whenever you put clocks far away from the system it introduces a whole uh, bunch of problems and issues but it's the same issues for all four of them. So we are using the D6 platform here of course beefed up with the, a couple of the uh, uh, UC Pure uh, ultra capacitors on one side and we're using the uh, on the other side another bank of ultra capacitors coming out from my D11. It's not the ideal leg I know the wires are a bit long but you know it's the same rig for all the clocks so we're comparing them all the same. One of the top-notch pre-amplifiers it comes in two boxes separate power supply and of course the Luxman M900U as an amplifier and uh, for speakers we are using my GS11 speakers. So after listening to these clocks for lots of hours, letting the SC Pure run for a good 24 hours straight and then start to listen to all the clocks. I first want to remind you about the cost of these clocks. I'll start with the, uh, the basic one that comes with the FIFO Pi. This is included in the price. You can call it kind of free. And the AcuSilicon one you can get around $40. It's same with the Christec. Uh, also comes close to $40. You can get those from DigiKey. I know the Christec one you can get from DigiKey and the Mauser. The uh, AcuSilicon one you have to source it from like places like Audiophonics or some of the uh, Asian market. Some of the high-end clocks usually sell for like for example the RFX which you can get from DigiKey. It's a high-end clock 
and it retails for 383 US dollars. And then we've got the uh, Ian Candace uh, clocks are going to be retailing for 179 So they're kind of in the middle range. But uh, if you compare it phase noise, for example, for, for the uh, Ian Candace clock versus the RFX, I think Ian Candace still has one of the best uh, phase noise of all clocks. So it's quite up there and I think it's priced competitively with the high end uh, clocks, if not at a good value actually. So uh, you will need two clocks, 145, 149, unless you really want to skimp because most, um, most music is in the, uh, on the 45 clock. So you can, if you really want to uh, be cost effective, get just a 45 one to start. But let's talk about the sound. So the basic stock clock, it's all around good. Uh, there's, there's nothing bad about it and don't like really discount it as like it's quite a, you know, it's just a cheap clock. It's not. It's actually a good clock and it's reasonably priced and uh, it's got a very good all around sound. And when it comes to the AcuSilicon clock, in terms, it's probably a clock I would describe as a neutral all-around clock. It's something that, it's that faithful clock that runs everything really well. And I'll talk some of the details in a few seconds. And then we've got the Crystac clock by uh, uh, the CCHD one and 957. And this clock is kind of a little bit on more of the detail end. So, if you like more detailed sound, it kind of jumps at you that way and it's, you're probably going to like that. Uh, depends on your system. If your system is too detailed, you might not like that. You might prefer the Echo Silicon one, for example. On my system, I prefer the Crystec clock because I'm using a lot of tube amplifiers and I like that particular detail about it. And then we've got the SC Pure clock. It's, it's a little, I would say, it's still neutral, but it's cut, it jumps a little bit, a few notches in all the different aspects of the sound. And let's go through those uh, one little bit at a time. I've got a little cheat sheet here. I've been recording, I've like, been listening to mark all the different, because after a while, keeping track of four clocks is, is not easy, even though you're listening to them right away one after the other. Let's talk about the clarity. The clarity of the stock clock is okay. And then the Echo Silicon one is also, it's, it's a little bit better. The, for me, the Crystec one has way more clarity than the Echo Silicon one. Some people will disagree with that, but that's for me. And as when it comes to Ian's clock, the SC Pure, they were quite uh, detailed, but not in a bad way. So detailed in a nice way and still have that nice musicality around them. So I would say neutral, but with, you can really feel there's a little bit better quality in the sound there. The biggest, biggest improvement you're going to feel with the uh, SC Pure Clock by Ian is the sound stage. That was the very first thing I could like right away uh, clue into it. And it's more the depths and also a little bit the widths of the sound stage. I could definitely see those uh, jumping out at me in a very good way and a very pleasant way. Uh, you'll find the AcuSilicon and the Crystac are both good, but they don't reach that level that the SC Pure clocks do on, in that domain. I'm talking small differences. Don't expect like you're going to see massive, you know, night and day, like these are garbage and this is gold. No, but you, there, there are small differences that you could hear, especially when I'm comparing them A to B. And we'll get to that a little bit after I um, have another, I did another form of testing as well. <clears throat> then we have instrument like uh, pinpointing how instruments are, where this is playing, where is that playing, and the space around each instrument. The, uh, the stock uh, clock was pretty decent. The AcuSilicon one, about somewhat the same, a little bit tiny bit better. The Christic one for me was a little bit better, 
and the, uh, the SC Pure one was much better as well. So there's kind of a little, it, everyone jumps out a little bit and uh, reach out a little bit more uh, to more detail of the placement of, of instruments. Then I did another listening test. I was very worried because whenever you put clocks away from a circuit board like that, and they're very sensitive devices, every inch counts. So when you start putting them, you know, six inches away from where they belong, you're basically killing them and the quality start to degrade. And uh, it becomes a little harder. I was worried that maybe the that way it may not be the best way to actually compare clocks. Yes, you can switch A, B, C, D. It's wonderful to do that. But again, I was just want to make sure that I gave every all the clocks the benefit of the doubt. So what I did is I put different clocks in the D6 and compared them to my D11. Yes, a slightly apple and oranges are slightly different, but they're all based on in Canada part, mostly the same parts, uh, except for the one, one on OPA 861, one is on Ivan's uh, transformer. But I have done once a video about those two and they do sound very similar, so I wasn't too worried about that. And uh, I noticed the same thing, the very same thing. Basically, the most uh, striking was the uh, depths and the widths of the sound stage with the SC Pure clocks. And uh, definitely the sound improved when I placed the clocks in the proper placement versus being away from the circuit board. If I was super handy, maybe I would design uh, and I have the time, I would probably design a board that I can cram the clocks really close together and put them right close to the uh, FIFO Pi and have very minimal wires between them. Uh, but yeah, switching, I mean, it's hard to get all the switching and all that. I think the best we can do is uh, we've already done the best I can with, with that. But it's always things that keep running into my mind. But uh, having putting them in their own uh, location, listening to them again and comparing them to my D11, which I'm using now as my reference stack, uh, I could tell I could tell the differences. I was able to confirm the same results that I could see with my ABCD testing uh, rank. You also have to look at the end and say, okay, so at the end, like, what did I, which one did I like the most? Uh, I did like the SC Pure uh, by Ian the most for sure. There's definitely an improvement there, and I, I think it's definitely a step uh, in the right direction. Um, it's uh, one thing actually I keep, I want to, uh, not to forget to mention, if you do end up getting the SC Pure clocks, do not put them in reverse. It's easy to do that because there's four little uh, pins and you can easily flip it the other way around and it will probably get destroyed. And that's a lot of money to, to lose by uh, doing something like that. And you can't go telling me, you know, it's came dead because we'll, we, I'm sure he'll know that it was fried. So uh, do not reverse those things. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, okay, look at uh, this picture here. You can see that in the board, you can see there's a little round circle where the pin one is. And on the clock itself, there's also a little circle and that's where pin one is. So the two dot circles have to match. So don't, don't flip it around and uh, you'll be sorry. So conclusion is, I think you have to look at your system and what kind of uh, rig are you building. If you're building like a really simplified rig that you're going to use as a you know, day-to-day -day listening here and there, and uh, maybe in a different room or uh, something that's not critical, then the stock clocks will be just fine. They'll play beautifully and you'll be, you'll be very happy with them. If you're building more, you know, an intermediate system, 
you know, you're not spending tons of money and you're going to keep your costs down. So one of the AquaSilicon or the Crystec ones will, will do just fine as well. If you're aiming to build a top-notch system and you're aiming for the best quality you can get, then the, you'll find that the SC Pure buy in Canada at 179 are a good price value. And uh, I would say you're getting the same value and better than some of the more expensive clocks, but without spending the astronomical pricing. And I don't have uh, resources to actually test some of the super expensive clocks, but uh, judging by the phase noise and by in Canada's, he had, I think, some good listening to different clocks, uh, and it seems like uh, his are still sounding better. So I would to take his word for that and I would spare uh, spending all this uh, uh, big amount of monies to, uh, to test some of the other clocks. Uh, the good thing about the SC Pure is that you just throw them in there and they were going to run, especially if you are running one of the Incandas uh, parts, it's easy to just drop it. Uh, I would also be tempted into using them into upgrading uh, some of the other DACs that you might buy. Uh, some DACs use the same structure and architecture of uh, same kind of clocks. They have the three, these are 33 volt clocks, by the way. And uh, so you'd be tempted to actually replace some of the clocks and see how these DACs would perform if you change the clock. The construction of the SC Pure clock is really good. It's, you can tell it's a quality clock. And what's really nice about it, it's shielded. Uh, it's actually double shielded on top and it's also shielded on the bottom. And you know me, I like, if you've seen my other videos, I usually like to throw an extra shield on the clocks. And it's kind of nice and welcome thing to see that these are actually double shielded. I ask Ian when the availability is going to be for the SC Pure clocks for everyone. And uh, what he mentions to me is that he has a little bit in stock right now. So if someone really would like to try them, would like to have some, you can contact him and he might be able to get you a couple. He doesn't have tons for uh, uh, the masses yet, but I think that's coming uh, really soon. And if you have any technical questions, I suggest you either uh, send them an email or uh, post on the forum and, and ask. And sometimes he pops in and he answers a few questions here and there. I would like you guys to contribute to this video. And if anybody starts getting those clocks, is to please put a comment below on, OK, I got those clocks and this is my impression about them. We are all different. We all see things differently. And I would like to, to hear what you guys think. Because uh, sometimes you start to doubt yourself. Am I hearing this? Am I hearing that? And it's kind of nice to get things confirmed by other people and see what others uh, think about these clocks. And the more comments you can uh, put in below, the, the better. I hope I was able to show you guys what these clocks are all about. And I did my best to compare them in the best way possible. And hopefully you got a little bit of an informed uh, opinion from my part on what to look for uh, with these clocks. If you uh, like my channel, please consider subscribing, trying to keep that channel going. Give us a like and uh, I hope to see you in another video. I'll put a link in the corner above on how I built the D11 uh, DAC. This is a series of five videos. I'll put probably the last one in there and you can trickle from there. If you know how I built those GS11 speakers, I'll put a link in the corner above. Take care and I hope to see you another one.